hi guys welcome back to my channel so in this video we're going to be talking about uh, drawing the table for SLR 1 and LR 0 parsing we have previously seen how to draw the automaton which is same for both the for both the methods for both the parsing techniques but the the, the only difference between the, those two come in only the table construction method now the table construction as in the table visually looks the same for both of them as in you would have uh, in the columns you would have all the terminals and uh, and then the variable as the go to go to table and the terminals as the action action table and these the rows are signify these rows only signify the states of the automaton as you can see there were 11 states 0 to 10 that makes 11 states and all these 11 states are in the 11 rows so as you can see there s3 s4 and all these what does that mean s3 means shift 3 s4 means shift 4 r2 means reduce 2 so i will come to the reduce operation later but let me just elaborate what does shift operation mean so as you can see in state i0 on input e you go to state 1 so on input e you go to state 1 from 0 you go to on input e you go to state 1 and on input t from 0 you go to stay uh, on input t you go to state 2 from 0 on input int you go to sh you shift to 3 so you shift to 3 as you can see from 0 to i3 you shift and then uh, from for on input opening parenthesis you shift to i4 so as you can see so shift 4 same goes for other states but as you can see there is one called accepting state now as i uh, as i've stated before the whole significance for augmenting the grammar by extending with another extra rule is that we need to do we need to know when to reach when to stop the whole parsing parsing technique which means that that signifies we have, we have reached the accepting state and that the parsing is complete and then the string is accepted by the parser so this state is state one as you can see on input e when you uh, when s prime goes to e dot that means um, when s prime goes to the starting state and, st and the dot is after the starting state the in the original grammar then you know that you've reached accepting state and this accept operation is written always under the dollar terminal but other than that the shifting operations are done according to whatever you can see for example in i4 on input t you go to, you go to 2 so in i4 on input e uh, on input t you go to 2 on input t you go to um, uh, on input t you go to 2 and input e you go to 9 as you can see and on input open parenthesis you shift to s4 that means on to yourself and on input 2 you shift to 3 on input int you shift to 3 so yeah that's how you would write the s3 and s4 and the shift operations and go to operations now let's come to what what does the r1 r2 r3 signify now r1 is uh, reduce reduce move like as i've said before when you've reached accepting state for the rules we know that we have finished our uh, completing uh, our automaton so when e goes to t plus t e dot what is the accepting state for this this one i7 as you can see the dot is at the end of all the right hand side symbols so this is an accepting state this is an accepting state this is an accepting state for this rule this is an accepting state for this rule and this is an accepting state for this rule right so for example what what which rule does this uh, correspond to rule number one as I, as you can see i've numbered all these rules it doesn't matter the, the order doesn't matter it depends upon what you order them in which number in which order you numbered them in so i7 in i7 the accepting state this one as uh, this one matches rule one so in i7 under rule one, under rule, uh, uh, sorry, under the terminals. Now, as you can see, under which terminal do we put rule one? R1, R1 stands for reduce move, which means that this accepting state now you can't shift anywhere from here. You can only reduce towards the towards uh, towards your left hand side symbol. That means after this you can't shift anymore because you've reached the dot is at the end of all the symbols on the right hand side. The only thing you can do now is reduce back, reduce back to your uh, left hand side symbol. So when you reduce to E, you put the R1 under the follow set of the terminal of E. So as you can see, I found out the follow sets for E and T because they're just two variables. So in follow of E, the terminals are dollar and closing parenthesis. So uh, closing parenthesis and dollar, you put the symbol R1, uh, you put R1 because you're reducing to one. Same goes for, uh, what you called, um, for example, same goes for 10, I10. The which rule does this correspond to? T goes to E, parenthesis E. 
this one rule number five so in i10 you reduce to five r5 so in i10 r5 and what is what is the variable on the left hand side t so on the follow set of t you put uh, you put r5 under the follow set terminal so r5 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 over here now this is actually this table that we have here is actually slr1 table right so in lr0 what happens in lr0 everything is the same except where you put the reduce moves in slr1 table you put the reduce moves only under the follow set of the left hand side variables uh, in the follow set of the left hand side variable but in lr0 you actually put the reduce move in all the terminals so there would be if this was an lr0 table so it would be r5 r5 and here also r5 that means all the terminals would have the reduce move same goes for the other 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 uh, states here it will be r3 then here R3, R3. So as I've said, it's the same except that this is the only place that they differ. And only in the reduce moves they differ. They, in LR0, you put the reduce moves in all the under all the terminals, uh, under, in, under the column of all the terminals. But in uh, SLR1, you put only the reduce moves only under the follow sets of the left-hand side variable that you're reducing to. Now, uh, notice that if I put R2 in all the cells in the, this in this uh, state what happens so here there would be one reduce move one uh, one reduce move and one shift move so this is the conflict now as you as you've seen before that in ll1 table when you have uh, more than one rules in a cell you know that you have reached a conflict and that that grammar is not an ll1 grammar same goes for this if you have multiple uh, if you have a reduce and shift operation in the same cell or if you have a reduce and reduce operation in the same cell That means you've reached a conflict and this grammar is not an LR0 grammar But this on the other hand is an SLR1 grammar because you haven't reached any conflict while you were while you were constructed the table for SLR SLR1 but you did reach a conflict a reduce a shift reduce conflict while constructing the LR0 table so this is uh, that means this grammar is not uh, LR0, LR0 grammar. What could be the reason? As you can see, I've said before that here the left uh, left factoring had, isn't removed. If the left factoring was removed, there would have been a strong chance that LR0 grammar would have been accepted as well, and there wouldn't have been a conflict. But SLR1 is a bit more powerful compared to LR0, and that's why we haven't reached any conflict, and uh, the grammar was accepted. So that's about it for constructing this table. Uh, if, if you want to check your answers, you could do so. Uh, this, the, for LR0, you just have to put the reduce moves in all the cells. And for LR1, so SLR1, you put the reduce moves only under the follow set of the variables that you're reducing to. So that's about it. Give a thumbs up if you, if you understood the concepts. And in the next video, we're going to be doing the parsing technique for LR0, uh, so for SLR1. And good luck.